Hey guys, what is up? Pope Payback with another patch preview. This time we got patch 13.16 coming in hot. And, and, I, and I mean hot, really, because this is a pretty big patch. I think it's gonna affect all ELOs, but we're gonna try to talk about how this will affect the lower ELO bracket the most. Another thing to keep in mind about this patch, it's gonna affect worlds, man. Worlds is coming up here pretty, pretty soon. And in my opinion, look, some of the changes we're going to be seeing here probably going to still be around with worlds and you're going to see so stick around to the end you're going to see all these massive massive changes let's get right into it with the buffs all right first things first we got a few champions that i personally don't like but a to each their own milio is getting buffed his base uh, his q base damage is going from 90 to 270 plus 90 percent ap ratio to listen to this 80 to 320 plus 120 percent ap ratio huh uh, okay look he's trading 10 damage early so a q with one point will deal a little bit less but then after that it's just straight disneyland for milio crazy crazy buffs i think he's his q is gonna poke so hard it's it's gonna hurt man it's gonna hurt he's gonna have a lot of disengage i think this is a big deal for this champion as well his e base shield going from 60 to to 140 to 60 to 160 ap ratio as well going up by five percent big deal for milio he's just gonna do everything he wants to do a bit better to be frank with you um i'm i'm not stoked about it but hey riot has spoken next we got lucian whose vigilance uh flat physical damage is just going up by five i don't think this is a massive deal um isn't isn't nothing for lucian um but i want you to pay attention right to this affects all elos this affects um you know uh, this affects diamond plus in my rank games this is probably going to affect your rank games wherever you're at all right lucian getting buffs at the same time as milio at the same time as lulu the same time as karma oh my goodness i think i think you know we're we're just back in the lucian nami kind of days we'll see all right lulu her her health per level is going up by 4 88 to 92 not a big deal um that ends up being a decent chunk of hp later um and as well though her q damage is going from 70 to 210 uh the base damage is staying the same 70 to 210 but that ap ratio going up by 10 percent it, it's not nothing i don't think this is huge you know but lulu does get a bit of ap in her build all those enchanter items they're going to give a bit of ap and that's why um, milio is affected in the same way just getting that ap ratio increased even a little bit on that e and you know a whole lot on that q i don't know what riot is smoking with that ap ratio we'll see um but a little bit of ap will go much further for these champions karma very similar treatment q base damage going from 70 to 270 um plus 40 percent ap ratio which is actually going to be the same except the ap ratio again going up by 10 percent from 40 to 50 all right um yeah it's gonna feel really nice like what what else can you say i think for karma though one thing that you can note with that q base damage and that ap ratio going up karma is far more likely to be played mid than these other champions i think we could maybe see karma mid being pushed back in that is uh, really sleeper uh, as far as worlds goes so you know riot I, please don't don't do this to us as well karma's mantra q detonation damage is going from 35 to 350 plus 60 percent from 35 to 350 350 plus 70 again big damage on that q she might be able to one shot waves uh she may be able to one shot you i guess we'll find out right right we'll find out uh that arc cooldown going from 40 to, to 34 from 40 to 31 very very nice changes for uh karma um for all these enchanters actually it's gonna feel really nice and I'll tell you who else this is going to feel really nice with. Caitlyn. Attacks per headshot. Riot Games. Attacks per headshot is going from 6 to 5. 
this is a massive change and I, I personally think this is probably the biggest change uh there might be one other change we'll get to later in the item list that might rival this one but look caitlin getting so many more headshots per game like this is a this is a huge amount i'm not good with math but this has got to be like an 18 percent more headshot or something like that right this is a lot caitlin is going to absolutely love this all right we'll see uh another thing i want to point out about caitlin look ivern's getting all these re reworks he's kind of getting buffed a little bit in some ways i'm pretty sure they recently buffed the amount of damage that uh you know the on hit was doing on his bushes imagine playing ivern support maybe we'll see that come out Caria, are you listening Caria, are, are you are you out there because imagine playing ivern support and you just drop a bush on top of caitlin while she's auto attacking two times headshots more uh damage on those actual auto attacks that could be kind of op we'll figure it out next up we got wukong top who's getting his mana regen growth uh increased by 0.15 okay fairly negligible i don't think that changes much is cube mana cost going down by going down by 20 excuse me just had a hiccup cube mana cost going down by 20 you know honestly not a big deal i guess um in in a way this probably means that wukong in the top lane is going to get a few more casts of his q right I, maybe it means he can look for a greedy trade or two but like is this gonna change wukong top like i i don't i don't think so i don't think so uh the mana cost on his w as well getting cut by 20 early yeah. look here, here's here's the thing about wukong top he he doesn't have good matchups right like straight up it, his matchups are, are kind of doo-doo top He's just going to get run over by the same champs he gets run over on anyway. You're going to pick Wukong, bro, they're going to pick Olaf. They're going to pick Darius. They're just, they're going to, the, I'm pretty sure even Mordekaiser is is great into, into Wukong. Because you can use his ult to dodge the clone while he's, uh, he himself is ulting or trying to, you know, duplicate those spells. Okay. I, I don't know, man. That's not going to change it. Whatever. Brand passive mana restore going from 20 to 40 to 30 to 50 uh okay that's negligible helps out brand mid um his qap ratio going up by 10 percent okay and his eap ratio going up by five percent 45 to 50 yeah sure i mean th this is this isn't this is a brand mid buff i would say i don't think this is brand support brand support is still gonna hurt right like it, increasing the qap ratio by 10 percent fine you, you'll notice it a little bit as brand support but at the end of the day the more ap you build the more you'll notice this brand support is still gonna to bonk you on the head but uh brand mid might just be turbo one-shotting you now uh we'll we'll see okay huge change here as an assassin player myself i'm very very excited for this though akali's q energy cost going from 130 to 70 to 110 to 70 very very nice for those of you that play Akali, you probably know. Um, you know, you queue the wave early. Well, that's probably all you're going to be able to do for at least a few seconds. For probably like six, seven, eight, nine seconds. Because, uh, you know, 130 cost on a single queue, that's crazy, right? Especially you're not doing that much damage to the wave. But now, at least it helps a little bit, right? You're still going to want to max that queue to get that cost down as much as possible. I, it'll be interesting. I'm not entirely sure how the math works out with, you know, wanting to cast two Qs or something like that. We'll, we'll see. Now, the damage as well is going from 40 to 140 to 45 to 145. The ratios are staying the same. Cool. That, yeah, we'll, we'll take that, I guess. I mean, it's nothing wild. Um, echo. All right. Q outgoing damage going up by 10 at every rank 60 to 120 to 70 to 130 the ap ratio is staying the same and the slow is going up a bit as well early from 32 to 60 to 40 to 60. you know th this helps echoes uh, trading patterns helps him drag that that q2 back through his enemies uh, with the slow helps him one shot those waves as he gets a bit more ap yeah i think this is gonna be nice for echo 
as well the w shield i know that got cut off but i've got it here for you don't worry the pope prevails his w shield is getting increased from 70 to 150 to 100 to 180 so yeah you know pretty nice for echo i think that's gonna help him out he's gonna have a bit more sustain a bit more trading power uh i mean let's see it's always exciting when these kind of assassin style players get buffed the only thing I'm concerned about is when you give Echo enough base damage, base sustain, this boy, let me tell you, this man, he might be able to build that off tank BS. We'll see. Riot has spoken. Let's see what they do. All right. Final change for the buffs. Silas going from 310 base mana to 400 base mana. You know, it's nice for Silas. I think that he can obviously uh, have a few more spell rotations in, in lane early. It's going to help him get to that early component. Sure, very nice. Another thing I want to point out, though, Silas support actually pretty good. Do not sleep on Silas support, and this helps Silas support a lot more, right? For the exact same reason. You get more damage uh, through more spell casts. So... We'll see what Riot has in store for us as this patch goes through. Let's get on to the nerfs. Okay, next up we got the champion nerfs. First up, Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai has been very, very strong lately, although definitely not a low elo champion, particularly because she's just difficult. She has a few awkward, awkward mechanics like her, her burrowed sense and the sword. Um, so her unbro Q damage is going from 21 to 45 plus 50 percent bonus AD to uh, oh it loses all of its Q damage that's really really uh, its base damage excuse me um, it is now gonna deal 34 to 50 percent total AD and as they noted here this is a nerf until level 13 uh, I think this is gonna hurt Rexai quite a bit again they're nerfing that bread and butter spell that's her main combat spell and uh, really Rek'Sai is an early game champion as well she wants she wants to hit that level three I mean she can full clear but typically she wants to hit that level three start ganking you from over walls using that that burrow that tunnel um, so I think this is gonna really really affect Rek'Sai uh, again I see this being more of like a diamond plus uh, type change, but I, I think that Rek'Sai has been performing well in low elo in part because of how strong her stats are. So I, I think that if you have been seeing Rek'Sai in your lower elo games, I think this is going to remove her. Next up, we've got Shaco support, and as a Shaco player myself, I am not happy to see this. However, his base mana regen is going down a little bit, um, 1.15, uh, which I don't think is really going to do anything. Uh, this only hurts AP Shaco, who is trying to plant boxes and just chill in lane. I don't think this is going to do a whole lot. Um, his W mana cost, however, going from 50 to 70. Yeah, I think this, effect, this affects things. I'll have to test out um, Shaco's early clear as well as even if as you're playing AD jungle Shaco, because you do plant uh, three to four boxes depending on what clear you're doing or depending on if you want to place a box to defend your own jungle um, if you're spending 70 mana the whole time it depends and that obviously that base mana regen is going down I'm actually very curious to see at what mana uh, at what mana value are you coming out of those first three camps with if Shaco can't uh, gank or if he's going to be too low or if it's or if you have to calculate that risk i think that's a huge huge change for shaco but we will see nefiri getting changed armor going down by two attack damage going down by two base attack speed going down uh just a smidge uh, i i think the base attack speed is probably the least of your worries here i think what is going to affect nefiri the biggest here is uh, that base armor and that base AD. Uh, she's going to be utilizing both of those to try and trade early. And so I'm very interested to see how this affects her early game. Another thing to keep in mind about Nefiri, her early game is definitely the weakest part of her game, which is saying something because her early game still isn't really that bad. 
Um, so this is definitely going to tone down and solidify the fact that Nefiri's early game is uh, uh, going to be a lot weaker. You know, people seem to underestimate what two armor and two AD will do. That two armor, she's just going to be affected by so many things a lot more. For instance, she's going to be affected by, um, you know, auto attacks, jungle camp attacks, um, minion autos, all the sort that affects that armor and that AD as well. You know, all of her spells, obviously all of her auto attacks, it's her last hitting, her trading potential, her clearing potential. This, this is going to hit Nefiri decently hard. Shivana, they buffed her. Now they need to nerf her multiple times, right? The Riot Special. So Shivana, her W damage per second is going from 20 to 70 plus 30% bonus AD, AD to 20 to 60 plus 20% bonus AD. So they're tapping that uh, base damage a little bit. Um, remember, that is per second. And as she's auto attacking you, as she's staying on a fight, she actually prolongs uh, the length, how long her W will be up. Meaning, uh, this does end up being quite a big, you know, quite a big nerf, right? Because over the course of a fight, it's very easy that she's losing 50 damage or so uh, on um, per level, really, of this in a fight. That's a big, big deal. Likewise, her her uh, damage per hit, which I think means that the uh, the amount of tick like the base tick damage if i'm understanding this correctly is looks like it's getting uh nerfed as well it's going from five to seventeen and a half to five to thirteen uh it's also losing two and a half bonus ad so they're really hitting uh ad shivana here we might see some more of those ap builds coming out it'll be very very interesting and tristana mid um this is the bane of low elo the amount of tristana mids that i see getting uh uh you know just getting multi kills left right and center just turbo stomping lane in like platinum and lower is crazy so look she's losing 30 uh base health she's losing two magic resist um and she's oh it looks like they're actually buffing the amount of armor she gets so they're protecting adc they're protecting marksman um, Tristana, you know, like they don't want to hit that armor, but they're hitting that MR. Okay. Should be more susceptible in AP matchups. Um, what this means, however, to keep in mind is that you can pick AP champions into Tristana much easier. Likewise, Tristana losing 30 base HP. It's not, not nothing, you know, like that definitely adds up. Uh, you know, if it's an AP champion who's auto attacking, you could end up being two autos or so, um, that, you, you kind of start to see that that difference um but this definitely means something for tristana mid all right now let's get to the item buffs all right the item buffs first up we got axiom arc going getting its uh cooldown refund adjust a little bit from five plus 40 percent lethality to 10 percent plus 40 percent lethality um Axiom Arc is a weird item, you know. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's that great in any elo, uh, except for on a few champions, champions like Nocturne, for example, who want to have that ultimate up permanently, and you know they just totally jive with the actual stats that Axiom Arc is giving you. Um, I think it'll be a big deal for, for Nocturne. I don't think it's going to be a, really a big deal for many other champions. This item still just isn't that good. Serpent's Fang getting three lethality. Very, very nice. You know, um, what I notice here as an Assassin player myself is that a lot of those Enchanter supports are getting buffed this patch. And as well, they're buffing Serpent's Fang. So that lets, you know, us Assassin players keep those... Um, those enchanters in check a little bit by letting their ADCs know what is up, paying them a little bit of a visit, right? Um, and with that Serpent Swing buff, it's going to help us continue to do that. Prowler's Claw as well, I think this is a massive, massive change, okay? And there's a few reasons why I say this. First off, the cooldown getting cut in half. 
This means that you can very easily proc Prowler's Claw twice in a fight. Champions like Shaco, champions like Rengar, right? They're going to be, champions like Kiana, they're going to be absolutely loving just this part of the change. But as well, the damage is going from 85 uh, for melee, 65 for range, plus 45 or 30% bonus AD to uh, the same base, but getting an additional 10% uh, for melees and 5% for range champions. Honestly, I think the one shots are back, boys. That's all I can say. I think the you know you've been seeing some 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 uh, Shaco gameplay in the background here. I think you're going to be seeing a lot more one shots coming back. Now let me explain quickly why I think this Prowler's Claw buff is actually insane, right? As you see, Lux get popped. This is why the Prowler's Claw buff is insane. The builds right now that I'm seeing a lot of assassins go, including Shaco, and I think Rengar can definitely do this. Um, I think Kiana can absolutely do this. I think Talon can absolutely do this. You go Eclipse into whatever boots you want. You, um, I've seen Koreans going Swifties. Uh, however, after whatever boots, then you go Prowler's Claw second. The second, the two item spike on this is going to be massive. You get a lot of uh, combat power, obviously you get sustain. Uh, you get that one-shot ability. It's 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 gonna be wild. I'm lo I'm looking forward to this. Finally, we have the Umbral Glaive getting buffed a little bit. I'm glad they're not touching the like how much you know vision it gives you, uh, but uh, rather they're just buffing the damage. I really like this. I think this is gonna be really nice for champions like Pike. Um, actually, AD Shaco support is gonna like this a lot. So yeah, it's, it's a nice change. This this might put it back into a range where you could see some mid lane assassins uh, opting into Umbral Glaive. Um, so yeah, looks pretty good. All right, let's finish off the patch with the item nerfs. All right, item nerfs. We only have one and it is freaking massive, boys and girls. Duskblade of Drakthar. It's missing health damage going down by 2%. That's okay, fine. I, I think it needed that. That is totally fine. Uh, this might stop unintended champions who are building this uh, from building this. However, the big deal, the cooldown going from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. Riot Games, Riot Games. Maybe it's time to consider reworking this item. Maybe the, the going untargetable or even before her going invisible, maybe that wasn't okay. You know what I'm saying, Riot? Um, if you're if you're listening, you know, let the Pope know. I just want to know that 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 you're listening, okay? Um, look, this is this is gonna. I, I think this kills Duskblade on a, a lot of champions. This might even kill Dusk Duskblade um, on certain assassins. I want to say. See, here's the thing: at 10 seconds you might be able to proc this twice in a prolonged fight okay you know you proc it once you might dip out especially on an assassin and you might go back in a bit later you know on shaco this type of uh this type of play style you could say is really really common um i, I obviously that's just that's just not going to be possible anymore 30 seconds is way too long you'll never see this proc twice in a fight um as well, obviously losing 2% on that missing health damage. It's a big deal, it's a big deal. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, we'll see. I'm, I'm actually really curious to see how, how this item comes out. I think this kind of murders Dustblade. I think they need to rework this. We'll see what's up. But that does it for, for the patch. Um, if you guys liked it, I'm gonna be having so much more content coming out. Uh, I want to get better at doing all of this, including patch notes, including, you know, everything. Uh, going to be having a lot more VODs come out, going to be having a lot more coaching come out. Tons of content, tons of shorts. So yeah, sound like a broken record now. But listen, if you enjoyed it, boys, like and subscribe. The Pope has so much content coming out. Um, I hope you enjoy. Have a good day. Pope pay out.